Hello and welcome to my dining table. New day, new puzzle. And I've done this puzzle before. I currently don't have any new new puzzles that I haven't done. So I am redoing puzzles that I have because I recently lost my job because of downsizing and I am on unemployment money. And I understand why people would like to be employed because unemployment money is not a lot of money. It barely covers my bills and I do like eating so yeah. I'm not buying any new puzzles anytime soon apparently, but this one is called Happy Dolphins and is really cute and it has 2,000 pieces and it is from Treffle. Not sure if I'm saying that correct correctly, but I don't really care. It's premium quality according to the box. And I mean, I've done it before, so I know it's good quality. Um, and, hold on, this is always noisy. came in different type of bags because I prefer put my puzzle in plastic bags when it's in the box because that way I won't risk you know accidentally opening the box and having a lot of puzzle pieces spill out that would suck and now I'm gonna try to figure out like how to organize or more correctly how to sort there are a lot of blue here obviously. Edge pieces is always, always gets to go in their own little pile. And I'm thinking, I don't know if I'll be able to sort very well. I mean, I can sort blue, but there's blue both in the sky and in the ocean, so that's gonna be challenging. Uh, but I have all the underwater like fishes and underwater plants and stuff and different oh I have stripy fish and I have mountain and I have seagulls and I'm sure that's this guy this one I'm not sure so uh sky mountain or a little island is probably more correct don't know Sky. Okay. Definitely a part of the dolphin. Okay. I feel like trying to figure out what to wait. Okay, the don't knows go there. And this is underwater. Dolphin. And the dolphins are both under and over water. And the water in the middle. Okay. I always Starting the sorting is always hard in my opinion because you don't know and I mean I had done this puzzle before but it's been a while so I don't remember all the sorting I did and everything like that so that's that's always a challenge I like the challenge don't get me wrong but like trying to figure out which piles I want to sort things in is always a bit, I wouldn't say mind-boggling, but it, I feel like it does requires, does require a bit of thought, simply put. So, and it's 
For me, at least, it is certainly not an exact science. <laughs> that is very, very true. Not an exact science at all. And I also have a lot of pieces where I'm like, I, I don't know where they would go. So I'm just kind of like making what I feel is a somewhat estimated guess. And, you know, some of it works and some of it doesn't. That's just how it is. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Put it there. But yeah, so I, I like starting my puzzles with the sorting. Except that one favorite puzzle I have. I stopped sorting that one, I just do it. But it's only 500 pieces and it's super easy and uh, I've done it I don't know how many times. So, but that's my favorite puzzle, not this one. I really like this one and I like the story of how I got it basically. Uh, I got it for Christmas, I don't know, many years ago. Okay, maybe not that many, but several years ago I got this puzzle for Christmas from my sister. Technically from my sister, her family, as in her son, daughter and husband, but let's be honest. It was my sister who made the decision on what to give me for Christmas. It was all my sister, trust me. And I kind of like, like it, the story. I think it's kind of cute. Uh, because uh, my sister was on a work trip. Um, I mean, I live in Norway and work trips for certain types of jobs is not the norm. But she was on a work trip, or at least I think it was a work trip. Um, and I, I, I didn't really care at the moment because, you know, I had my own things going on. So, she was on her work trip, and uh, on her way home, people around her did wonder a little, because she had gone and bought this puzzle, and they were, I think they were questioning her a bit, understandably, she should occasionally be questioned, but then again, so should I, so, you know, <laughs> there's that. Uh, but she bought this puzzle and you know a puzzle isn't necessarily all that fragile but if you want to give it away as a present you want the box to be you know nice and box shaped still not squished and they had taken a bus so they were they were being bused down to Poland and back and uh, you know when you have bags so bags not like hard plastic but like malleable bags things can get squished really easily especially if you shove them all in a trunk okay not a trunk of a car but like under the bus where you put the bags yeah that is where it was you know gonna travel basically and my sister was like, you have to be careful with my bag. And they were like, okay, not quite sure what the deal is, but okay. She's just like, there's a puzzle in there. I don't want it to get squished. <laughs> and I, I can't help but think that, yeah, I understand why sometimes people question both me and my sister a little, our sanities, you know. <laughs> but she was very adamant about like, not having a squished bag because of the puzzle and that's that may have been how my how my sister's co-workers figured out that she liked puzzles but they was like okay so you're buying a puzzle in Poland to bring home to Norway why can't you just buy it at home from my understanding it was a lot cheaper and she hadn't seen this at home, so she figured, hey, why not? It's a cool thing to do. And 
I think so too. So this is a Polish puzzle, or at least it was bought in Poland. So I kind of like that. And I'm struggling to figure out the <laughs> the organizing yet, I feel. But that is normal. I feel that too. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's the story of how I got this puzzle. Did you like it? I know I liked it. I think it's nice, you know? Like, I don't need souvenirs from wherever. Puzzles, however, puzzles I will accept. And I guess you could say part of, the, part of the beauty with puzzles, it doesn't matter if it's in a different language, you don't have to understand that. You just have to put the right pieces in the right place. I love that. And speaking of the pieces, there are like all the regular sizes. No, yeah, sizes too, but all the regular shapes, I think is more the correct word. So, yeah. I, uh, they do sometimes stick together, but that is normal when they're all in a ooh, massive pile like this. And uh, sorting always, I think sorting is like my least favorite thing of doing the puzzle. I prefer the, you know, putting pieces together part of a puzzle. And I don't know, I, I imagine that is kind of like the favorite part of, for most people when they do puzzles. I obviously don't know. I'm not everyone, I'm just me. But I can't help but think that, like it's the act of actually putting pieces together that is the favorite part basically for most people. As, I mean, I would assume. But I don't know because I'm not in everyone else's head. That would have been exhausting and disturbing, I assume. There's a lot of assuming going on today apparently. So, uh, <laughs> it's a thing, apparently. Oh, I keep, I keep trying to put things in different places, even though I don't know where they're supposed to go. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's how I got this puzzle. Um, as I said, I think, I don't know how many times I've done it before. I don't think I've done it a lot of times, if I remember correctly or incorrectly for that matter. I don't think I've done it many times. I've done it a few times, I think. Uh, and I said it was from Treffle and, oh, it's, it's copyrighted in 2016. So it might have been when I got it. Could that be correct? 2016 maybe I I don't know <laughs> but it might be around the time when I got it and you know for Christmas as I said so yeah that's uh there is that I um I started my gardening journey yesterday or my gardening journey had lasted since I was a kid but I started putting seeds in the soil, outside. Actually, it wasn't yesterday, it was the day before yesterday. Yesterday, I just sat outside in the sun and knitted. <laughs> because, yeah. And I'm gonna show you my knitting. I just, for some reason, I haven't been lately. I will. And I've been finishing a lot of things, so. I don't fully know what I'm gonna decide to like um, put it into different videos because if, if I put it just or try to put it in just one video it will be very very long on the other hand you know I do long videos or if you 
<laughs> if you don't know I do long videos, hello, you must be new. Nice to, uh, nice to have you here. Nice of you to come and say hi and visit. I really appreciate that. I like getting new friends. And yes, I keep referring to you as friends, because, you know, we hang out. And that's what you do with friends. You hang out. Uh, I have no idea about that one. At least that is how I like to look at it. We're friends because we hang out. And that's what you do with friends. You hang out. Ooh. So, yeah, hi friends. That's the, that's the thing I find, find interesting with certain YouTubers, how they address their subscribers and their viewers. Like, uh, some people have the same intro most, if not all the time, and some seem to be changing it up a little every now and then. And if, I don't know about you, but I'm used to, if people say hi to me one way and have done it for a long time, I, it's very jarring if they suddenly say something else in the beginning. Like, I mean, if Laura from Garden Answer all of a sudden would start introducing her videos in a different way than, hi guys, that's not quite how she says it, but like, she always says the same phrase, you know? And if all of a sudden she were to start the videos in a different way, uh, that that would have felt weird to me as a viewer. So, I don't know, how do you feel about that? Like how, how people say hello when you first basically enter their videos? Is that, yeah. I mean, I am a very much a creature of habit, so I like things to be a lot of the same, because, you know, as I said, habit. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I think I would find it very jarring if someone started saying hello in a different way, or finishing off their videos in a very different way than what I'm used to. I would probably find that very, first of all, very surprising, because what a change. But also like, what are you doing? This is not how you do. Because we get, or at least I get, like used to one thing and then I would honestly prefer to stay that way. But at the same time, change can be good, not always. There are some changes that are not necessarily good, but you can't stop all changes. But some changes you, you might not really need or want for that matter. It's kind of like with diversity. I think diversity is a good thing, but too much of anything I don't think is good. Honestly, too much diversity will be just that, too much. I don't think it will be healthy for any parties involved because if everyone is different, and it, it sounds cool, but if everyone is different and you don't agree on anything, how will you ever get anything done? How will you be able to have a society if no one agrees on everything. You have to have like at least a bottom line of agreement that yeah some things that people can agree on so they have like common ground to a foundation if you will to build something on because if all you have is diversity and nothing nothing in common then I mean, imagine trying to build a house that way. It would fall down and crush people. That wouldn't be nice. You wouldn't want to build a house that would risk crushing people. So, 
I mean, just, no, you wouldn't do that. Or then again, some people might want to do that because they're horrible, but I would not want to be a part of such thing. So I think diversity is a good, but only until, is a good thing, but only until a certain point. I know some people who agrees with me, and I know some people who would probably protest to that. I need to restart you. Honey. Yeah, we're, we're a bunch of different people. And also you can't expect everyone to agree on everything because if you have too much of the same, that's not good either. So you have to have a balance. But that, that you can see, say it's a, it's a different, it's a different challenge because the balance thing, it's not easy and People would like different balances. So, I mean, there's so many different things that could go into all of it. Um, and I, I don't know. I like diversity, but as I said, too much of anything is usually not a good thing. You need to have some common ground, but if everyone was the exact same, that wouldn't be good either because where would you be challenged? Where would you have new input or learn new things? So, I mean, there, there are always many sides to a story. I know this, I think the saying goes something along the lines of there's always two sides to every story and I'm thinking, no, nah, it's a lot than just two more two sides to a story. I believe it's as many sides to a story as there are people involved, one way or another. But you know, that's my opinion. You don't have to agree with it, but I would like for you to accept it and possibly respect it, but agree with it, no. I think it's good to disagree on things, but do so in in a kind manner, I guess possibly might be the word I would choose. Because sometimes you have to be able to agree to disagree because some people you just yeah, no, can't can't agree with them. Some people are more easy to disagree with than others. That's for sure. I mean, I've also met people that their preferred way of living is seemingly disagreeing with everyone about everything all the time. And I can't help but think that must be exhausting. But you know, we're all different. We get to have our different opinions. Sometimes I prefer people that agree with my opinions, but other times I want to be challenged also because I don't know everything. I need to be challenged because I don't know everything. So I need, I need a little bit of both. I need people to agree with me and I need people to disagree with me. So I can have kind of like both sides, I guess. Unless I find them to just be really, really stupid, then yeah, if you don't agree with me, then maybe not. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, good. So that was, yeah, then again, I didn't plan what to talk about today because I've kind of given up on that a little. But I had talked about like what I like in puzzles. That was kind of a fun video for me. Very, uh, what was the word, disjointed. <laughs> I'm not saying it all made sense, but I never say that all I say makes sense because, I mean, I, I couldn't lie and 
have people believe a lot of different things, but not even I would be capable of lying that well for people to believe that, so that wouldn't be very nice. So I don't want to do that. I'm not saying that people shouldn't lie, then again, lying does cause a lot of problems, but lying can also ease certain things, I guess you could say. I'm not saying it's a good thing, I'm just, sometimes we, sometimes we need the little white lies. And other times, other times things would have been a lot easier if people were just being honest and telling the truth all the time. But then you have the other side of the truth being uncomfortable and a lot of people can't handle the truth. And also because they've been so used to people lying to them, so having certain people hear the truth is uh, quite disastrous to their health, I believe. <laughs> then again, they kind of need to learn to handle the truth because at some point, the truth does have a tendency to come out. You don't have to like it, but it's there. It will come. Whether you like it or not. And, uh, yeah. I, uh, I watch a lot of different stuff on YouTube because I don't have a TV. Which some people think is weird. But I haven't had a TV in... God, I don't even know how long. When was the last time I had a TV? I did have a TV like 12 years ago. But I never watched it. So I realized I didn't need to have it. So I kind of just quit TV and then I use YouTube. So I had Netflix for a while. Kind of like in two rounds basically, but yeah, there is so much good stuff on YouTube, so why why pay for Netflix when I can have a lot of cool stuff on YouTube for free? Especially now when, you know, the no money coming in, or that's not true. You do have money coming in, but unemployment money, as I mentioned earlier, not a lot of money. Luckily for me, I uh, knew that it was happening. And so I knew to basically hoard all the money coming in for a while to have a little extra. And that is certainly paying off now. I still have money so I can buy food. That's great. Uh, if I hadn't been hoarding extra money, I mean, I would have been able to pay my bills. But the buying of food would have been uh, more challenging. I'm not saying that's why I want a farm so I can grow my own food, but I just, I like growing food and flowers and like all that kind of things. I've always enjoyed it. I haven't always done it, mostly and partly because of, you know, space, but I, uh, I've always grown something. When I was a kid, I had uh, the windowsill in my bedroom when I was a kid. My dad had to kind of like take it from a regular one and expand it so it got twice as big because I had so many plants. So I guess you could say I've always been growing stuff. I, I think it's part of me, at least at this point. I can't, I can't imagine not having plants. That would be... I don't know. I can't even imagine it because it's it's such a big part of me, the having plants kind of things. So, yeah, growing stuff is important to me. And I would like to be able to grow more. And I mean, imagine how cool that will be. Or at least it's really cool in my opinion. That if I go to see a friend and we're going to have like a little snack or something and that I could bring like oh we're gonna have lunch 
Don't worry, I'll bring the salad. I grew it myself. I mean, how cool would that be? Or, I at least think that would be really cool. So, stuff like that, you know? And being able to say, oh, I'm gonna do dinner. Uh, half of what we're eating, I grew myself. Or to, when I go see friends, try bringing them a bouquet of flowers and say, here, I thought of you, so I just grabbed something from the garden. I hope it makes you smile. I mean, such cool things. At least in my opinion. And sure, you have the added thing about everything is getting really expensive and, uh, you know, if you grow it yourself, you might save some money because <laughs> everything's getting really expensive. And, you know, growing food yourself instead of just buying it at the store, if you buy it at the store, someone else have to grow it and also they have to transport it from where it's grown to the store and then you have to then you have to transport it from the store to your house so there's a lot of transporting going in there so go as local as possible with your food i'm currently not really doing that but i have a grocery store that's really close so I basically just, I can walk to my grocery store. It takes me 10 minutes to walk there. And that's not a fast walk. <laughs> if I walked really fast, I think I could do it like seven minutes, but I have no interest in walking really fast. I just generally just want my food when I go to the grocery store. Um, but yeah, it has to do with like, doing it as local as possible because i mentioned before i like nature i want us to be kind to nature i want us to take care of it and not you know continuously screw it up and fuck it over like we have a tendency to do as humans but be kind to it and i figure that's a way i can do kind of like my part of being kind to nature I could grow some stuff myself, so I don't have to get it from the store. And sure, I know that, like, in the big scheme of things, what I do for me, it won't matter much because I'm only one person. However, I am one person and what I do actually matters. And if more people do it, even if just to grow your salad in either on a pot outside if you can, and if you don't have that, grow it in your windowsill. It's possible. And even though it's not a lot, every little bit counts. At least I really hope so, because that's, that's my belief, <laughs> that every little bit counts. So I feel like that's, that's kind of like, that's doing my part of it. So, yeah, that was, uh, that was me putting nature in this video too. I am, um, I mentioned before, I love nature. I'm addicted to nature. And having my hands in the soil and growing food and flowers and being in nature, it makes me happy. So yeah, I say that I want a farm, but let's be honest, sure, I want it, but I need it because I am kind of miserable if I don't occasionally get to have my hands in the soil. That's just, I didn't realize how much it mattered to me and I always feel better in the spring. And yeah, sure, the weather's warmer, the sun's poking out, and people smile more in general, but that matters less to me 
is the putting my hands in the soil and growing stuff, that matters a hell of a lot. So, yeah. I always, always feel better when I can grow stuff. So I think I need to find a way. Um, first of all, to grow more stuff because it makes me happy and I need it. But also I need to find a way to grow more of my own food even, even in winter. I'm not saying I'm gonna get a heated greenhouse to try to make that work because that sounds really expensive. And I repeat, very little money these days. Um, but I don't know, I just, I like, I like the idea of growing something, anything really, throughout the year. It, even just the idea makes me happy. So I think, I think, think that's something I need to look into. What do you think? What do you do? Do you try to buy local? Or maybe it's not a possibility where you are at? I don't know. Would it be possible everywhere in the world? I honestly don't know. It does make me curious though. Like so many other things. I am a generally curious person. Does that mean I look everything up just because I'm curious? No, that would take up, well, everything of my time. So I don't do that. I mean, I like doing things like this and I can't be looking up stuff while I'm puzzling. Or, I don't feel like I'm puzzling at the moment, I'm just sorting, which Yes, I know it's part of the puzzling, but it doesn't feel like puzzling. How do you feel about it? The, the sorting before you actually start putting pieces together. Do you enjoy it? Do you feel like it's preparing you for the puzzle doing? Or how do you feel about the sorting? Or don't you sort at all? I mean, when I was a kid, I don't think I sorted many of the puzzle pieces. I just sat and like dug through the pieces in the box. <laughs> so that was, uh, I have evolved. I do it very differently now than what I used to. And that's, that's the thing. I've, I've also seen a lot of people on YouTube uh, make puzzle videos and how they do it and they do it in different ways and I find it really fascinating that there's so many ways to do something that I thought would like oh you can't do that in many ways and it turns out you can so yeah I find it fascinating then again there are tons of stuff in the world that is fascinating that does not mean I can do everything because I'm only one human. I am human. I'm mostly happy about that. Sometimes when the world is going crazy, oh wait, that's like all the time lately. I sometimes question whether I really like it or not because all the stupid idiots in the world. But you know, <laughs> you win some, you lose some. And there are certain people that uh, I just, I just don't get them. But, you know, as I said earlier, diversity is occasionally good and uh, we want some of it. Not everything all the time though. And not, and not too much. Just the right amount. Don't ask me what the hell that is because I have no idea. Like, oh, what's the right amount? How was I supposed to know? I haven't done research on that. I haven't done really any kind of like that kind of research. I wonder if anyone has. Like, what's the, what's the tipping point going from good to bad when it comes to diversity? And by that I mean like, if everyone is the same and if everyone is different, it's like how I don't know, let's say, what's the percentage of uh, diversity 
that is kind of like a good percentage in a way. I wonder if anyone's done research on that. That could be fascinating. Like 30% diversity and then 70% of the being kind of like the same and having the same mindset and values and stuff like that. Is that, those are just numbers I just threw out just to kind of give an example, but like, what would the, what would the percentage be? And I'm sure it's not like one very specific percentage, it's probably like sliding, sliding opportunities. <laughs> I don't think that's, that's the right word, but like, it's probably, it could be like on a scale. So not fully one thing, but not fully another, but like in between these numbers is a good number for diversity. That could be an interesting thing. And try to, I wonder if anyone, like it would be so cool if someone tried to do research on that and then tried to put together a society like that to see, does it work? Will it fail? Uh, what will happen? If, I feel like they're to a certain extent trying to do that like in real life without actually, you know, trying the science behind it before they just put it out there. Uh, to a certain degree, I feel like politicians are testing it out without knowing any science about it when they take in a lot of foreigners like people that are not originally from one country if you have a bunch of them go to a new country and mix with the, the original population how much mix is good where's the tipping point from good to bad I feel like several of us are currently being experimented on to figure out what what will happen and honestly I'm not sure if I like the experiment because in in some places you can see it going well and in some places it's not going all that well and I don't I don't appreciate the not going well part it's not bad where I live but, I mean, it, it could easily get bad in a lot of areas because there are a lot of strong opinions about these topics. So, I don't know. And it's all also making a lot of people scared to talk about it. And I was like, well, if you got to figure things out, you kind of have to talk about it. At least that's that's what I feel that if you wanna if you want to learn something go to the source or figure out figure out who knows something about it and ask them so you have to talk about talk about it to people but there are a lot of people that are scared of mentioning a lot of things like that because they're scared of being labeled in different ways that are painful and occasionally dangerous. And I mean, I don't feel that's right. You should be, just because you try to talk about different things and offer different opinions, that should be okay, because if it's not okay, that means we don't have freedom of speech. And I kind of like my freedom of speech. I like being able to talk about what I want, when I want. And sure, there are certain things that, you know, you might not want to have positive opinions about certain things. But, I mean... Sometimes you gotta play the devil's advocate. So, 
then again, I, I, I feel like some people don't understand what that is even anymore, which is very frustrating. You have to be able to see things from different sides to fully understand it. I'm not saying that that means you have to agree with everything. Definitely. And I realized too late that you had cut me off. That always makes me curious. When did you cut me off? I mean, because I know the why. My camera only filmed for about 20 to 25 minutes at a time. And then I have to kind of like stop and start it again. It is really annoying. I'm not gonna go out and buy a new camera because I mentioned many times now, money. It's a thing. And also, I mean, my camera works just fine. I just, I have to get better at remembering when I start recording. So I know when it probably will stop recording. It's a whole thing. And I am feeling, oh, okay, it's still quite a bit left. I was just going to say, I feel like I'm getting pretty close to the end here. And then I'm thinking, eh, maybe not that close. <laughs> I wish it was closer to the end because I want to get to the good part. You know, the part where I get to put pieces together. I like that part. So yeah, I feel like we have touched upon uh, several different subjects today. <laughs> Did you like them? Do you have any opinions of, of any of the subjects? Uh, do you live in a country where you have a lot of immigration? And how is it? Is it a good mix? Do you have like a good balance? Or do you have struggles and problems and challenges because of immigration? And I feel like in some areas it seems to work better. But, and then you always have the people that are like negative to everything anyway, no matter what it is. So I don't know. And also immigration as a whole, I feel like that's a, a what's it called? Hornet's nest? You know, a nest of kind of flying buggers that you don't want to put your hand in because uh, it's going to be real painful. <laughs> and I don't know, I, I, uh, I, I have a blog in Norwegian and I have occasionally tried to touch on the subject and then I get really scared and then I pull back. Because I, I don't want people getting mad at me. And if as soon as you start putting your hand into that nest, it's pretty much a guarantee that no matter which side you take, someone's gonna get mad. <laughs> because they're de very different, they're very definite sides, it seems. It's like some is all for it and some is all against it. And I was like, can't you be something in between? I, I feel like it's a thing, you know? The in-between thing. And I'm not in between because I don't want to take a standpoint or don't have a standpoint. My standpoint is in between. That seems to struggle. Uh, or seem to struggle. Uh, that seems to be a challenge for some people. Because some people are, well, you either this or that. In between, no. And I'm thinking to myself that, honey, the world is not just black and white. It has so many shades of gray. And, you know, you'd, you'd think adult people would know that. Even blind people know that there are different shades of gray in this world. So... I, uh, I know some people that are very 
What can I say? One track mind. You either against them or you with them. And you better be with them because if not, mm, there's gonna be issues. And I just, mm, I, I'm not real crazy about people like that because I think they're, as I mentioned earlier, not just one or two sides to every story. I think there are many sides to every story. And some people seem to not want to acknowledge that. And I find that annoying. I'm not saying you have to agree with me, but because it's my opinion, not everyone else's. And I should get to have my opinion. And my opinion is kind of a little bit in between. And that's seemingly hard for some people. Which confuses me because I don't think that should be hard. It's just that's how it is. And yeah. And how I got into the talk about immigration, I'm not fully sure. <laughs> I guess you could say it's been on my mind. Um, partly because I don't know what's happening in my country lately, but there's, there's a lot of violence going on. And although I no longer work at a school, there's also a lot of violence in the schools. Like, students, it, it's just been a report that is out now. And I mean, students biting and hitting their teachers? I was just like, what is happening? When I went to school, like, as a student or as a kid, even, even the thought of any of the students doing something like that would just like, no. The thought never entered my mind because... Not because I liked all my teachers, not necessarily because I respected all my teachers, it's just... That's not something you did. I mean... I have my own opinions, but I, I still know... Like what, how to treat people mostly respectable and acceptable. I mean, and some of today's kids are like going off the rails and I can't help but wonder what the hell is wrong with their parents. Because I don't think kids like magically turn bad, so to speak. They must learn it from somewhere and whether somewhere is their parents or their peers or other people around them i mean their parents should take care of kind of fixing that issue before it gets too far and if you as a parent can't do anything about it well i strongly advise you to get some help because that's not okay as a parent, you are responsible for your child. And it seems, as I said, based on the report that was just released here, that, I, yeah, I, I don't know what the hell is going on, but whatever it is, it's not good. And it's not acceptable. And, but a lot of people seem to try to just brush it under the rug. And I, yeah, it doesn't sit right with me. But then again, I am... Then again, I am single. I don't have any kids, nor do I plan on it. And... Uh, that is probably a good thing, because I would have been... So strict. To the point over some people would probably think that would in, in strict in a way that would be no good. And I was just, I can't help but think it's like, well, you have to teach your children manners. But you know, not everyone seems to agree with me on that one, which I find a little sad. Said so over you don't have to agree with everything, but like. Some things should be 
agreed upon. If you have kids, you teach them manners. You teach them to not like hit and bite and kick your teachers. That is not acceptable behavior. It's like, what is, yeah, no. Like, and if you're struggling with teaching your kids that, first of all, I, I seriously doubt your capabilities as a parent. That's not to say no, uh, some kids are not harder to teach than others because, you know, kids are different. No two are the same. But still, I mean... But, as I said, who am I to talk? I don't have any kids, nor do I plan on having any. Ever. Because, yeah. Just, it's not my thing. I like my alone time. I like my puzzle time. I like being able to choose what I do. Most of the time. R right now, money is also choosing a little bit of what I do. Like, not buying new puzzles. That's my money talking. If I had a lot of money, I probably would have bought some puzzles. But, you know can't have everything. Warm tea, for instance? Apparently not always. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, yeah, I feel like we're touching on a lot of different subjects today. <laughs> so, yeah, and I am closing in, I feel. I mean, the pile is a lot smaller now. I feel like I'm truly closing in on finishing, um, finishing the sorting. That makes me very happy and excited. And I cannot wait, though I totally have to, but I cannot wait until I can, you know, actually start the puzzling. Putting the pieces together. It's my favorite p part of the puzzle, is putting the pieces together. So, we're getting there. We're getting there. It's taking some time, but we're getting there. I feel like that's how it is with a lot of things in life. Some things takes a long time, but in the end, it's worth it. And other times, things take a long time, and it's not really worth it. So, you know. It's important to have a bit of variety. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's a thing. It's a thing. I am starting, I'm not saying that I'm getting a sore throat, but I'm starting to run out of ideas for the moment. Not completely, but you know, I feel like it's been a lot of different topics and I kind of told myself that I would try to be better at staying on topic in these videos. Yeah, as you can clearly tell, that did not work at all. <laughs> uh, so not at all, but you know, and maybe you could say it's for the lack of trying, because maybe I haven't been trying hard enough, but at the same time, it's like, well, what would be trying hard enough? I don't really know. And I find myself not caring that much about it. The, you know, I would like to stay on track. It would make editing easier, my brain easier, but... Yeah, I am uh, I'm reaching the end here. I'm getting more and more excited. And uh, I'm not saying I'm trying to do it faster because that would give me adrenaline and me and adrenaline, we're not really a good match. Me being stressed, it's not a good thing. 
I lose energy like crazy as soon as I get stressed in any shape or form. So, and some people say, oh, you just get stressed and then you go back to normal. Now I don't go back to normal, or I do eventually, but it takes such a long time. I don't know what is up with that, but adrenaline does not work for me. Just make me shake. And I don't think I'm supposed to shake in such a way. I can't show you because I'm not that kind of stressed right now, thankfully. If I had been, I, uh, I wouldn't have been able to do much of anything. And also, I would not have energy for like mostly a couple of days after, which is super annoying. Just because you all of a sudden have a lot of adrenaline in you doesn't mean you should be like zapped for energy for like days after. I don't think that's normal. But I've never claimed to be fully normal, so I don't know. Maybe that's the thing. Uh, I am going off in circles, I feel. But I kind of really wanted to finish sorting while I was talking to you guys because I kind of like it. I still can't explain why, but I just do. Might be, as I mentioned earlier, that I feel like we're having a friendly chat. Might not have said it now that I think about it. I think I just thought about it. Because believe it or not, and you might not, <laughs> Not absolutely everything that goes on in my brain actually comes out. Most of it, yeah, sure. All of it? Actually, no. But most of it. It's, it's important with a bit of uh, variety. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's really sunny outside, so when I'm done sorting, because sitting like this for too long, it makes my back very angry, so I think I'm either gonna go out gardening a little, or maybe go for a walk, and then I will obviously be knitting some more, and I should, no, I should stop shooting all over myself, uh, but I want to film a knitting diaries again. I haven't done that in a while, but I have been knitting a lot. So we kinda have a lot to talk about, so I'm thinking, when I do my knitting diaries, I will divide it into several videos because if I don't, it's gonna be so long. Then again, this video is gonna be like, I don't know, an hour or something? Because I don't know how to do this faster and I also don't know how to shut up, clearly. So, you know, you, you win some, you lose some. This is not going to be fun to edit, but I'm going to do it anyway, because I, I, I like putting up videos, because I, I like the interaction it gives me. And uh, yeah, I enjoy that. I don't much enjoy cold tea, so yeah. I can't really sort and drink at the same time. I'd be too worried about spilling the tea. Like, the actual spilling of the tea. Not spilling the tea as in, ooh, I'm gonna tell you some secrets. I don't have a lot of secrets, I think. I don't know. I don't feel like I have a lot of secrets. For a while I had some secrets, but there were mostly other people's secrets that they told to me. I didn't really understand why they would keep telling me secrets, but you know, we all have different opinions of certain things. At the same time, they knew I wouldn't tell anyone else their secrets, so it was very much of a, their secret was safe with me. Because if they told me something in secret, I never felt like it was my task to tell it to someone else because it wasn't my secret to tell. So everyone knew that I kept all the secrets 
Sometimes they try to like, ooh, I know that person told you something. What did they tell you? And I was like, nah. I know they told me, but they clearly didn't tell you and I'm sure they had their reasons. And sometimes people got a little upset when I didn't want to tell them other people's secrets. And uh, they didn't want to go to the specific person and ask them. It's like, oh, what did you tell me? Because, I don't know. They didn't feel like that was the right thing and they also knew it probably wouldn't tell them. So there was no point asking. And yet, they kept on asking me. I never really figured out why. Because I never told, so. But, as I said at some point earlier, we're all taught different things from our parents and in different ways. And, you know, some people had a sense of privacy and some people a little less so. I, um, uh, I, I didn't have a lot of secrets, so didn't matter to me much. So, yeah, but it's kind of kind of fascinating thing. And I'm gonna end this video here because I am done sorting, and I have to. I will probably start by doing the edge. And these are mostly dolphins. That is the sky. That is the little mountain thing. This is kind of like in the middle between sky and ocean and ocean bottom bottom of the ocean like the fish and plant thingies i don't know which order i'm gonna do them in as i said i'm gonna start with the the edge pieces i think that will be the easiest so but that will uh, be next video i uh, hope you <laughs> i hope you have somewhat been able to enjoy this video Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And if you're not already subscribed, um, you're on YouTube. You should be able to figure out how that works. And I hope you have a nice day. Grow something green. Do a puzzle. I've heard several of you are doing a lot of different puzzles and I'm here for it. And I wish I could do the puzzles with you. Not actually with you, but like do the same puzzles just to see what I feel about them, but, you know, can't have everything. And before I start ramble even more, I'm gonna let you go with a thank you so much for watching again. I really appreciate it, and I hope you have a nice day, and I'll see you in the next video.